Good afternoon and welcome to Acts of Magis, Athenians in the Service of Society. I am Chris Caspili from the Student and Administrative Services Cluster of the Leola Schools, your moderator. Today marks our 13th session together. It is also sort of a season finale, right? For we will take a break after today, but we will definitely be back. As a culminating session of Acts of Magis, and as a contribution to our celebration of the Ignatian Month, we present this special session to you. We are live on Gmeet and are streaming on the Ateneo Facebook page. Before we proceed, may I ask the audience to kindly put your microphones on mute and to turn off your cameras for the duration of the program. Thank you. Let us now listen to Dr. Mario Vilches, Vice President for the Loyola Schools, as she gives her opening remarks and introduces our guest presenter today. Welcome one and all to this last segment of our first round of talks in the series called Acts of Magis, Athenians at the Forefront of a Pandemic, or Athenians in the Service of Society. For giving birth to this series, I want to thank the University Research Council and the Ateneo Research Institute of Science and Engineering. I also want to thank you, our faithful audience. You have been faithful since May in this first round of talks. After this, we're going to pause, take a break for a while, and then begin our second round in the first semester. These talks have been an experience of fullness of heart. We have come to appreciate better the magnanimous work of our faculty members, both from the Loyola schools and from the professional schools. In a nation that is at the grip of many relentless, dumbfounding obstacles to peace, prosperity, well-being, and human dignity, the work of our faculty members has been extending a hand of hope, of courage, and of faith to our people. We thank them for their passion and congratulate them for their achievements. I said earlier that the talk today would be the last segment of the first round in the series. It is the last, but far from being the least. For how could it be the least when we reserve the best for last? No less than our university president, Father Jose Ramon de Villarín SJ, at the helm in this webinar. <clears throat> Father Jet, as he is fondly called, is a physicist, and an atmospheric scientist by training. Graduating B.S. Physics, magna cum laude and valedictorian of his batch, he is often regarded by the Ateneo de Manila's physics department as its claim to fame, and rightly so, as the young scientist did not rest on his initial laurels. He went on to get further training in his field by earning his Master of Science in Physics from Marquette University, and his PhD in Atmospheric Physics from Georgia Institute of Technology. In recognition of his expertise, the National Academy of Science and Technology accorded Father Jet the National Outstanding Young Scientist Award in 2000. In 2001, he edited Disturbing Climate, a book that documents the early engagement of the Philippines in climate change issues. That book was conferred the National Book Award Sciences category by the Manila Critics Circle, by the National Book Development Board, and later in 2002 by the National Academy of Science and Technology. Because of his work on greenhouse emissions, Father Jet became part of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a team of climate scientists that won the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize together with Al Gore. In 2011, after having finished his two-term presidency at Xavier University at Ateneo de Cagayan, Father Jet was sent to a new mission field called Ateneo de Manila to become its 30th president. The wild ride steering this thousand-wheeler truck for nine years became the priority of this scientist. Teaching physics, one of Father Jet's great loves, and doing research, 
one that uncovers curiosities of his scientific imagination. While these have taken a back seat during this time, science has never left Father Jet. He continues to be an active member of local and international government and climate groups. He is lead reviewer of the UN Convention on Climate Change and has worked with the UN Consultative Group of Experts for Developing Countries. He is also part of the advisory board of the Climate Change Commission in the Philippines. In Ateneo de Manila, it was through his initiative that the Ateneo Institute of Sustainability was established. Lest people think that Father Jet as a scientist is confined to the rarefied stratosphere, they should watch him strum his guitar with gusto or play the piano swiftly and enjoy the down-to-earth company of his brother Jesuits in community. Not everyone has seen this musical side of him, but all in the Ateneo de Manila community recognize his being a man of God. Imbued with the seal of St. Ignatius of Loyola for the mission, he draws people to transcendence through his inspiring insights wrapped in poetic prose. During his presidency, his great gift of writing made a way into three bestsellers, Startle, Weed It, and Xiang'a. Despite his celebrity stature, for example, when students ask, Father Pasel Fiha, Father Jet continues to live the example of one foot race for the mission through his simplicity, humility, and faithful service. So ladies and gentlemen, with great pleasure and honor, I enjoin you to welcome the man of the hour in whose person, science, and spirituality are happily entwined. University President, Father Jose Ramon T. Villarín, SJ. Thank you, Dr. Vilches. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the 30th President of the Ateneo de Manila University, Father Jet Villarín. Father Jet, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Marlu. What a wonderful Gosh, nakakaiyak naman yung... Ko, you know, I've been looking for pictures. Uh, and, and I know many people want this, all these selfies. Then I realized I don't have too many pictures in my, in my computer. I was looking for pictures for this presentation today. Anyway, uh, uh, Chris, could you, or is it Christine, who will put up the, the PowerPoint? Yes, well, we'll put up your presentation now. Okay. Just this is just to share with you some you know uh, some reflections. All I'll be medyo ano ha, medyo na madale. Um, I was hoping that the sabbatical will give me also the benefit of time and introspection. Pero I I've always been reflecting on this uh, the, the intersections in in our lives and some of these intersections. So you, sometimes you you, know, you 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 have a fork in the road and you, you, know, you do you turn left? Do you turn right? And, and you don't really know, uh, and and you're you're agonizing over some of these things, and yet somehow we make do uh, with our choices. Some of the choices can be wrong, uh, have been wrong, uh, but then we we we're never broken in a way by by these choices. Uh, sometimes we cannot go back. Uh, but anyway, just I hope that this talk will just stimulate us to reflect on our own crossings, the intersections, the crossroads that we've faced in life. Next slide, please. So let me begin with this image. No? When, uh, it is, this is Loyola, Ignatius, right after his conversion. After your conversion, you're, you're, you're quite zealous. You know? So you're fired up, you're ignited. And so he goes off on, on a pilgrimage. and and. Ignatius shares this in his autobiography, which is strange because uh, this is a story where he, he meets a, a Muslim a, a Moor, and they, they discuss the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I think, if you know, Muslims respect Mary also. But anyway, at one point, the, the discussion becomes heated and 
the Ignatius felt at least that this, this person was insulting Our Lady. So they part ways. Uh, after they part ways, Ignatius is thinking, God, did, how come I just let that go? Um, I better, you know, maybe I did not defend our mother uh, that well, so I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to chase this guy and, and kill him. <laughs> Remember, this is the uh, impetuous Ignatius. No? This is the impulsive Ignatius. And so he, he, he reaches a fork in the road and he does not know whether to follow the, the Muslim or to go the other way. And so what he does is he, uh, he lets the donkey decide. You know? uh, he, uh, and fortunately, uh, thankfully, the donkey goes the other way. Imagine if the donkey had chosen to go the path of the Muslim. I don't think we will be here today. So uh, I, I think you know, if he had killed that Muslim, he would be in prison. And I don't know, if you were to speculate on an alternate trajectory, yeah, maybe there will be no Jesuits. Uh, so, we Jesuit kid that ever since that time we let the donkey decide, <laughs> we let the we let the ass decide uh, our future, but that's just of course uh, tongue in cheek. So let's reflect. Oh, I've been reflecting on on these crossroads. The next slide, please. Now this is not a choice, but uh, sorry, I have to go back. This is go. When did my interest in science start? And I. I there are many sources, but I remember my, my father uh, one, one evening after his work, he, he was showing me this nail and he, he, you know, he coiled some wire around the nail and put it to a battery and it became a magnet. Um, I think I was what, eight years old or nine um, and I was fascinated by that. I said, ah. How can that be? You know, I mean, a battery can can light up, you know, a small bulb. How can it? How can it also attract? How can it make a magnet out of a nail? And if you took the wire out, then um, there would be no magnetism. There would be no attraction. That fascinated me, among many other things. Uh, my father perhaps had the choice what to do. Uh, how will I ra raise this? This son of mine, you know, uh, what what kind of toys uh, should I, you know, show or give him? Uh, I remember being given a a, a, a magnifying glass. Uh, very simple things, but they sort of roused my my curiosity. It also helped that I come from a musical family. I mean, my, my cousins, they all have musical instruments. And then my father and my mother said, OK, you play the violin. <laughs> that was my first instrument, uh, one fourth size, very small, um, so eight years old, uh, playing the violin uh, under Professor Salas practicing. Uh, that helped, you know, music helps sort of in the math side. You know, you have to count, eh? you have to count beats. There, you know, there are fractions in a way, like four fourths, three fourths, uh, six eight. Uh, yeah. So perhaps you know the, the math part came already with the music. Uh, and one of the highlights of, of playing the violin was I was part of this group that I, I was telling my parents only recently. So why did we line up to see Pope Paul the uh, Sixth along Rojas Boulevard? You know, there was a motorcade and. Paul the Sixth came, and why did we line up to see him? When actually, I remember because that evening we were in Malacanang, uh, and so I was part of this group that was playing, you know, with the pangkat kawayan for the Pope. And of course, I, I was just, you know, just going like this with the violin, but you know, I was so, in a sense, mesmerized, starstruck by Pope Paul the Sixth. Uh, anyway, so music helped. Uh, the first, I, I, can you, next slide please, Christine. Well, ito, my first cross, one crossroads was graduating grade school, grade six. I came from Lourdes School. Eh? Um, and 
I applied to Philippine science. And I remember, so, so arrogant pa eh. Siguro, kayang-kaya ko to, yung Philippine science. No? And I went also, just parang insurance, I went to Ateneo, admissions office, Becky Sanyosa. I said, Ma'am, I said, actually, you know, sa totoo lang, my first choice is not you, it's not Ateneo, it's Philippine science. Um, because I really want to be a scholar ng bayan. Um, and there's an allowance, a monthly allowance. Anyway, to make a long story short, I passed the first battery of tests, but the second battery, wow, I failed it, and I was so uh, devastated by that because I, ayabang ko eh. Hala ko, magaling ako eh, sa science, di ba? Hala ko, magaling ako sa math. And anyway, so I had to go back, I remember, to Miss Sanyosa and tell her, sorry, ma'am, will you accept me? And thankfully, she did. And I, you see, this is a high story. Ito, nakita ko to from my high school classmates. This is our class. You see Pagsi there on the lower lower left. So that's Pagsi. Um, and, and, and well, you know, and to this day, this is our class. We meet. Nag-zoom kami. Hindi lang ako nakakasama, pero nag-zoom kami every Friday. No, um, tawag namin e-inuman, no, electronic inuman. But anyhow, I have no, at that time, you know, I said, this is not really my choice, my path. I was hoping I'd go to, to, to Philippine science, Pisay, and now I'm here, I'm here in Ateneo. So, sige na lang. Actually, that first year, I remember um, my algebra. First time for me to encounter algebra. I got a line of seven. Uh, I'm not used to line of sevens in the grade school. You know, I said, and then sabi nila, eh, atineo na to eh. No? Atineo na to. And for a while there, my parents actually came to me and said, kaya mo ba? Kasi baka kung may rapan ka, di ba? Uh, lipat na lang tayo. Uh, sabi ko, hindi, sige lang. I mean, I will study. And actually, I remember my dad and I, we did not know algebra. We learned it together. My, my dad's an accountant. Eh. Um, so, anyway, algebra was something foreign to both of us. And I remember really agonizing over this 2x plus 5 is equal to 3x plus 2. Find x. I said, how, will, how, do you, how do you find x? You know, what do you do to find x? Uh, and when I finally got it, I, I, I'm so happy. <laughs> it's like a puzzle that you had solved. And and that was it. Uh, and, and I remember my dad was working for a car company. He came to me. I was second year high school. He said, you know, we have this problem about the price of a car. What should be the price be given? This is the tax. And, uh, I know, blah, blah. So it was more like a calcul. It was more like an algebraic linear programming thing. And I said, pagan ko lang yan eh. Subukan natin. Then I, 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 I wrote the solution. This, this should be the price of the car. And he said, oh, no, tama ka. And he folds it. He folds the piece of paper, puts it in his wallet, and says, I'll tell, I'll tell the company tomorrow. And I thought to myself, God, what did I do? What did I said, I helped, my, I helped my father do a complicated calculation. Um, and he said, there's something there. And then when we got into third year physics, nagkataon lang yon. I don't know, that's serendipitous. Pero nag-away-away yata sila sa college. Father Glover, who was a Jesuit, was assigned to the high school. That was his only year to teach physics. Uh, he was teaching college physics. Pero at that time, there was some conflict in the physics department. So he, he got sort of sent to the high school. And that was our year. And Father Glover made physics come alive for me. Uh, we, he taught it differently. We had home experiments even before these days of quarantine. There's a lot of group work, and and uh, he he gave us free reign. We were creative, you know. We were looking, we were measuring falling bodies using uh, well, upon strobe lights, not use electric fan and light bulbs. Um, I was interested in guns. Sorry, I was interested in knowing the speed of a BB uh, bullet. Uh, air gun uh, so using momentum 
But these were problems given to us and we were supposed to solve them at home. So a lot of group work. And I think, you know, if you ask my classmates these days, they remember some of these experiments. One of the, one of the strange things was, for the Glover, every meeting was a, there was a quiz. Eh? The tradition that they, every day quiz. And that means every day they, they corrected papers. Uh, Father Glover, when he taught physics, every day my quiz. And you know what? I was, I was acing the quizzes. I mean, I was getting, I got 100 in the card, the report card. I would get 100. And I said, why am I getting 100? And some of my classmates were failing physics. I said, but, but there's something there. Strange. Um, I remember I, I was getting line of seven in algebra in first year. And then here I was getting 100 in this subject. Anyway, to make a long story short, so I said, maybe, yeah, maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good in science. Um, uh, not so much math, but science. No? Uh, so anyway, then fourth year was chemistry. When chemistry came, I got fascinated with chemistry. I forgot all about physics. So that when college came, next slide please, Christine. When college came, I had a choice between UP, Chem Eng, and Ateneo Chemistry. And then, uh, again, crossroads you know. Um, uh, what happened was, well, Father Samson was then admissions in aid, gave me a scholarship. And I said, thank you, because you know, uh, otherwise, you know, UP was really uh, much cheaper. And, and engineering came in was quite attractive. So I, I, went, I went to Ateneo. Oh, by the way, I was in the UP. I was in the UP. I was in the UP. I was UP. So I had a choice between Ateneo and UP. And I came to Ateneo. I took chemistry. And I had one of the one very wonderful professors like Father Schmidt. Very strict. <laughs> and and uh, and Dr. Kapawang, you know, a real genius, the, the father of Hilda. Um, they, they, they taught, uh, I mean, Dr. Kapawang is, is a, was a physical chemist. You know? so they really taught a solid chemistry. But then I got bored. Sorry, I got bored with chemistry. So again, another crossroads. First year, I said, I'm going to kasi. Pwede naman ipasa, kaya naman, pero ano eh. I think I was looking for something more. Then I remembered physics. Di ba nung high school ako, I was excited about, ba't ka nakalimutan yung physics? So then I, I, I actually, I went back. I, I changed course. Uh, I said, I told Father Samson who was teaching chemistry then. I was so afraid because I went, I remember going to Servini dorm telling him, Father, I don't like chemistry anymore. I like to do physics. And I thought he would take away the scholarship. So afraid. And you know, to think Samson's credit, that's okay. Of course, he had to grill me first. He thought I was just being, you know, influenced. I was just uh, you know, being carried away by, you know, what was interesting and what was not. Anyway, I, I ended up in, in, in physics. I remember going to Sina Arnie del Rosario. They were there. They said, Para mas gusto ko yung ginagawa nila kasi they're in the shop and their their hands are dirty. They're working on you know with their hands and doing all sorts of things. Anyway, so that in a way that path that, that I I made that choice and that I think that's one of the choices that have well, that has made me who I am now. Um, that the choice of physics. Next slide, please, Christine. There are only about 12 slides here, I think. When I graduated, yun, um, I had a choice. Sabi ko, wala pa yung, wala pa yung pagkahiswi ko dito. But uh, Father Perez, who was my biology teacher in the high school, fourth year pa lang ako, sinabihan na ako, oh, you'll teach physics, ah? you'll, 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 ano, you'll go to high school. I go, yes, yes, Father. And then I remember around uh, February, March, I get a letter from my old physics professor. Father Glover, who was in Davao, said, would you like to come to Davao? I said, wow, Davao, I've never been out of Manila. And this is an adventure. Wala pang JVP pa nun eh. 
uh, nagsisimula ka lang. So, I agonized over that. My, my, my father said go, but my mother said no. Um, and so, actually, I didn't know what to do. I went to Father Ampil, who was the principal of high school. I said, you know, Father Ampil, I promised Father Kiko Perez that I'll teach in the high school. And you now another Kiko is asking me, Francisco Glover is, is inviting me to Davao. What do you think should I do? <laughs> Ampil said, go to Davao. And he was the high school principal. Huh? Oh, okay. And I thought, too, that if I had stayed in Manila, and I'm speculating here now. Um, it would have been another pathway, perhaps. It would have been very difficult to face some of the decisions that I had to make, like one, one of which was vocation. And I said, oh, going off to a place where I was not known, I did not know, the language was foreign in a way to me, it's a buono. I said, maybe, yeah, that will help me discern and decide. And so I did. I went to Davao, and I, I remember, of course, my mom, who did not want me, because at that time, Davao was violent. Grenades were being thrown in movie houses. Uh, it was not a safe place at that time. But I said, I, I, I feel drawn to, to go away. And, and to my mom's uh, credit, friend that she, she let go. She allowed me. Um, so that was the first time I left the mess. And I remember, oh, you idealistic jet billery. Now in Davao, first two weeks pa lang, umuyak na ako. I was homesick, you know, first time I left. Eh. Um, anyway, so I, I, no regrets though for that year. Because that for me also became my JVP year, Jesuit volunteer year. The JVP Jesuits, Chila Bill Kreutz, learned that I was ready in Davao and to join the JVP. So, sure, sure, I'm ready here anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, yun. Uh, it was actually in that year that I went to a 19th annotation retreat. I was, what, 21 years old. Uh, made that decision to enter the Jesuits. Next slide, please. Nasa nubishit pa lang tayo. Anyway, uh, that, that decision to be a Jesuit for me, well, let me just tell you that, you know, sometimes people think that vocation is something very clear. It's not. You, uh, you don't get a, a text message from heaven saying, I want you to become a Jesuit. Jet. It's, not that. it's, no, it's not clear. You, um, and, and that's one of my key messages when, when discerning that reality is fuzzy. <laughs> And, and despite that fuzziness, you make, you make these decisions. Uh, these pictures, well, sorry, ito lang nakuha ko eh, sa aking laptop. You know that on the upper left, you can see that's Bobby Yap. He's the incoming president. You know, we were here tending our vegetable garden. We are in our 20s. To the right, you'll see Pedro Walpole without the beard. You know, I don't know if you know Pedro Walpole. Uh, that's our car, <laughs> actually. That's my... Uh, yeah, I think that was a visiting Sunday. I'd just like to draw your attention to that lower right, lower left corner. Um, he's a guy, you know, part of our training as novices is to go to different fields. Uh, one is hospital. Um, and so I was an orthopedic. I was assigned to work in orthopedic. Uh, as at that time, most of the Jesuits went to orthopedic hospital. There was this guy who who met an accident and um, and he had no family. The guy who's standing and walang pumapansin sa kanya eh. So I took care of him. I bathed him. Kasi ang, ang baho talaga. You know, public hospital to ha. Ah, maraming dead soul. And, and uh, this is a picture after, a few months after I left. Uh, he, 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 I thought he was going to be a quadriplegic. I thought, you know, because you know, he, had, he had broken parts of his, I don't know, his body. But he, he survived. Uh, and he sent me this picture. He sent me, and I always kept it. He said, oh, uh, you mean the good that you do to someone, it, it, 
he, he, that person remembers and, and does it also for others. Um, it was also in the novitiate that we, as Jesuits, we were already faced with some choices. I mean, are we going back to, are we going to the school apostolate or are we going to go to the to more direct grassroots work? I must tell you that direct grassroots work, pastoral work, was something very attractive at that time, especially for us. And we were thinking, I think some of us had this thinking that if you go back to the Ateneo, the Ateneo is a school for the elite, school that, you know, uh, and many of the Jesuits, at least the young ones, were saying, no, let's, 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 let's do something more direct, um, uh, even hospital work or you know, work in the mountains, etc. I remember Father Bonoan coming to the division one evening and trying to convince us that the, that the Atene de Manila is a powerful apostolic instrument. Um, and that was important also for us to know because we had sort of prejudged what the Ateneo was. And we said, the Ateneo is this and that, when it was not really according at least to our judgment. <clears throat> so when I finally was about to get out of the Nubishet after vows, I remember Father Ben says, he gives me a book. Father Ben Nebres was our provincial. He gives me a classical mechanics book. I had forgotten physics. I said, I will just become a priest whatever that means. But Father Ben gives me this physics book and he says, you have to go back to physics. I said, huh? I, already, I had already left that field, you know. I just want to be a Jesuit. What does that mean? No, just a Jesuit. Anyway, uh, I'm glad that Father Ben did that because I think it's one, if there's one thing our superiors try to recognize our own talents. You now, sometimes we get carried away by, by yeah, by currents, uh, or fashionable or fad, fashionable things, fads at that time. And I thought, well, this is something God gave me, uh, this talent for science. And why not offer that talent, multiply that talent for others? So next slide, please. Um, when, when we came to Regency, uh, I <clears throat> had a choice, again, whether, you know, at that time, this was 1985, uh, my batchmates, Sila Danny, well, Sila, you know, Sila Vic De Jesus, Giorgio Magada, they were all going to Mindanao. And I told Father Ben, the provincial, I'd like to go to Mindanao too. And he says, no, we're going to study. I said, I was 25. Why? You know, you have to, you, got, you have to get your master's in physics. Huh? Uh, I can do that later. No, you're not getting any younger. I was 25. You're not getting any younger. You have to do, you know, you have to get a master. So I went to this cold place called Marquette. But no regrets because I met some of the most wonderful Jesuits there. That's my desk. I just saw this and I saw Sobra na Kalitan na. That was 1986. It was the EDSA revolution and I was not in EDSA. I was not in the country when it happened felt so bad. But also during that time, people were coming to me, Americans and bars. When they saw people power, they said, what a beautiful people. They were in awe of us Filipinos at that time for having done this. Next slide, please. So, coming back, then I do the usual theology for ordination. And after ordination, I'm told by my superior, no longer Father Ben, but says, you go back to get your PhD. So one crossroads, I said, okay, at that time I did work on lasers. That was my master's thesis, laser speckle. I said, I'll do LIDAR, laser radar work. So I, I was ready set to go to Fukui under Kobayashi Sensei. I was learning Japanese, ready, trying to write, you know, Hiragana, Katakana, I was already learning that. But I was hoping for a Mombushi scholarship. And I remember the interview, I was interviewed. I said, yeah, this is my plan. Kobayashi Sensei is willing to take me in and I'm going to study laser, laser radar. And then, <laughs> I reject. 
found. I didn't get the scholarship. And what was what was funny was my own RA. I had a research assistant then. Uh, he got it. I said, "Oh gosh, this is so humiliating." You know, bumagsak na naman ako parang Pilipinas. I didn't get the Mombusha. That made me turn. I said, "Okay, if I'm not going to Japan, let's try the U.S." And at that time, there was a guy named Jerry Grams doing laser radar work at Georgia Tech. I wrote him and said, I'd like to, is it possible to apply? I forgot actually all about it until Georgia Tech wrote me and asking me, are you still interested? I said, oh gosh, I forgot all about Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested, please, please. Accept. And they gave me a scholarship. And so I went, I went to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. I was so happy. Uh, but when I got there, Siyempre, hinanap ko si Jerry Grams. Will you accept me? And then Jerry Grams says, sorry, I don't have money. I don't have funding. Oh boy. Cambio na naman. Another shift. I went into air quality. Urban air quality. For three years, I was doing, I was measuring, I was measuring the, the baho in the air. I was going to Nashville. I, one thing nice though, I learned to drive six-wheeler trucks. I was just going to Nashville, delivering liquid nitrogen tanks. One, one, one summer, I was asked to go to Blackjack Mountain in Atlanta to set up a monitoring station. I said, okay, sure, driving this pickup truck. Ako lang mag-isa pala. Akala ko may kasama ako. So I learned to install an air conditioner. I learned to install a phone line. Aside from the usual instruments, that that kind of experience I think is priceless. Anyway, to make a long story short, after three years, not that I got bored, but my mentor said, "Now you have to go into this plane and measure some things over the Pacific." I said, "Okay, sure. How long will it take?" And I thought, "God, magtatagal pa to ah. In this na limang taon lang, bakakag pitong taon yung service ko." So actually, you know, I I said. Mike, I, I called my mentor Mike, first name basis. Mike, sorry, but you know, I, I, I need to go home. Uh, I've been here three years already in the US, you know, and if I don't get my PhD in two years, I, I you know, I, I have to I have to choose something else. And to his credit, you know, Mike says, Okay, you don't want this anymore. Good. You you choose. So I went to something that sort of would sort of was more predictable, that would take me less time. So I shifted. Kumambi na naman ako. I went to modeling. That's my dissertation there. So, um, by the way, this picture, these are just the Jesuits at that time, the 90s. I went to modeling work, and I'm also thankful because then I experienced what, you know, the hard part about, it's not easy to do modeling, to, to program things. Um, and, and, but that also brought me to places, you know, uh, it brought me to NASA Langley, it brought me to, and, uh, I, so I sped up, I really worked hard, um, and in two years I, I finished the, 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 the study, and when I got home, next slide please, um, finally after five years in 98, um, I didn't know what to do. Again, here, it's not even a crossroads. I didn't even know where the, are the roads. And I remember asking some of my Jesuit friends, brothers, what, what, what will I do? I, I've been sent to the Manila Observatory, not even Ateneo de Manila Observatory to work. Anyway, that began my introduction to climate. I knew I had a little climate stuff. I sort of studied it while I was at tech. But then, that this, this, this field was something dear to me, climate change, even in the 90s, early 90s. Uh, I, I would cross swords with sometimes professors in MIT, like Dick Linzen, uh, or even Kerry Emanuel, who would come to Georgia Tech, and you know, they'd tell us, scientists are by, are by nature conservative. <clears throat> they're, they're doubters. You know, we're paid to doubt, always. If there's a fad like climate change, you, you really examine it. At that time, it was like, you know, climate change was like just a new thing. Anyway, I, 
I'm thankful that I got assigned to the Manila Observatory because this was when I went into climate work and uh, even it was not sexy the topics that I went into like greenhouse gas inventories it was just like counting counting it was like accounting uh, it was some science in you know but the 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 more exciting science was actually in impacts and, and vulnerability and adaptation. But that got me into policy too. That made me ask, uh, you know, it's not an either or, no, but I, I guess, sci what's the science for? Uh, yes, I get fulfilled. You, you advance, you expand the pool of knowledge, but what, why, what for? And so I was really looking for impact um, in, in in social impact in, in the scientific work that I was also interested in. So it, this work brought me to, you know, to also many places, uh, met so many kinds of, many, many kinds of people. Next slide, please. And now to science, and now to, uh, well, from science to administration, you know, uh, in 2005, I was in the Manila Observatory. I got a call from Father Danny Wong, who was the provincial, who was my batchmate, tells me, you're now going to be president of Savior. I said, anong alam ko sa administration? Anyway, I am no regrets, really. Uh, I'm glad that I... You know, what, what, what is administration? Administration is service. It's, maybe it's no longer my time to shine or to let others shine and to make sure that the conditions are there for others to shine. I'm glad that uh, administ administration has thrust me to, to so many situations. No? Uh, sometimes people just think of burdens, but there's so many, there's so many exhilarating uh, moments as well uh, that you will never find if you had just been in a laboratory. Uh, because of administration, yeah, you, you, you are able to, uh, uh, I guess, you're able to create things that, that multiply. Uh, or, or you know, uh, you know when, when I came, I remember the, our research in Ateneo, no? our research was, our research productivities was just, at a certain level. Now, Ninet tells me, wow, 200 plus na tayo, no? uh, publications this year, 265. Uh, and then this year, you know, probably. So to be able to marshal the resources, we, that doesn't mean just money, no? the people. Uh, uh, and, and, and I guess the, the whole atmosphere, making sure that this happens, that's something that's, uh, I think that's a gift of, of administration. So in a way, it's also, I know, my, my stepping down, sometimes people think, oh, vacation ka na. There's, of course, it's mixed. Um, also a letting go for me uh, when I step down. Um, anyway, um, last slide na yata to, sorry. It just, a point that I wish to make, I guess for us who've been sort of touched, moved by Ignatian spirituality, the magis, it's never just, a, it's never really a choice between good and bad. Um, it's really between good and better. And, and, and the magis is not necessarily better or faster or more. Uh, I, I hope that we, we know when magis becomes a narcissistic yeah force. It can be a uh, force for Yabang. It's not just excellence. Really. Um, Majis is the choice of a greater love. If, if you love a person, you will not settle for what is good, merely good. You always look for something more. Sometimes the Majis means to speed up. Sometimes the Majis means to slow down the rest. Uh, sometimes the magis means to lead, sometimes the magis means to follow. At any rate, you know, with all these choices that present uh, our post before us, I really believe that God adapts. God adapts to our choices. Perhaps God has desires, 
Pero, I mean, maybe he says, oh, turn left, Jet, turn left. Oh, 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 no, he turned right. He'll adapt. God will adapt. Or, I think we also adapt. We learn to adapt. Um, and so, well, one last. Sometimes people say, oh, give me a sign. Lord, please give me a sign. Should I turn left or should I turn right? Just give me a sign. Maybe a butterfly or something, you know, that a firefly. Uh, be careful, you know, of course. The subjectivity enters and, you know, you can manipulate. Signs are by nature ambiguous. They're supposed to be fuzzy. If, if, if they were so compelling and so clear, then there's no point in discerning. There's no point in faith, in the leap, in the dark, if everything were clear, right? And so I think we should celebrate that blurredness, that fuzziness, that chiaroscuro. Because things are not clear, then we have a chance to mean our choices. It becomes our choice. It's not just God's choice. It's not just someone else's choice. It's our choice. Our path, which is past is taken. It's not just taken for me. I take it too. I cannot blame God later. So, kasi sinabi mo, ganito, o pinakita mo itong sign, hindi naman pala. Hindi ganun eh. It's also our choice. Um, yeah, and I always say this even in weddings. Precisely because you do not know whether you are going to become richer or poorer. Precisely because you don't know whether she'll become healthier or sicker. Precisely because you don't know. You decide. And I hope you decide to love. To love her or to love him for better, for worse, for richer, for poor. Um, precisely because you do not, you do not know. Um, so to the young, please. I hope you will not be afraid to make choices, to choose, to decide. I know to the young these days, there's so many channels. There's, and, you know, so it can be very confusing. It's so hard to decide. Uh, but I hope you, you, will, you will not be afraid to, to make a choice and to mean your choices. To the old, I hope we can be careful about regret. And I hope that we remember to be grateful always, to be open to wonder, to be light. Every day, even as we are old, there are choices to be made. It's never early to prepare for the ultimate crossing at the end of our lives. I end with this story. Christina, wala. Christine? That's the last line. I'll just read this with you. Two roads from Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the thirst for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father Jet. We um, invite all the, our audience to please unmute yourselves, your microphones, and it's Father Jet around as well. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, but of course, uh, of course, yes, our, our, our last guest for this season, we still have to give you an uh, act of magic heart to others. Are yours? Yes, thank you for giving us an act of magic heart. All right, all right. Maybe we give our microphone again? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We can, we can spare Father Jet of the usual uh, questions no, that, that we usually direct our guests. And I think uh, the invitation is for us to actually ask ourselves more questions about the reflections he had shared. But what we would want to give Father Jet now are some greetings of thanks. So Acts of Magis is brought to you through the dedicated collaboration and loving service of many people and teams. And they will let you see and hear from some of these companions of ours as they also give their thanks and appreciation to you, our audience, and of course, to Father Jet. To start, may I call on Dr. Ninette de las Peñas and Dr. June Aguilar, together with the members of the University Research Council. You may please uh, turn on your microphones and your cameras so Father can see you. Hi, Father Jet. Hi, Ninette. Hi, Ninette. Thank you so much for everything you have done for us. The research, you're here, the URC. Yes, thank you too. Thank you. I showed Archeum, huh? Archeum that at the Yes, that I, I saw that, Father. <laughs> okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you for supporting all our initiatives in URC and Ateneo de Manila has really achieved a lot in research thanks to your leadership and to your vision and to your support. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a surprise to me to know that we have 260 last year. We produced 260 papers last year. Huh? Um, that's, yeah. Anyway, more than... <laughs> Definitely a lot of blessings. And I, I think, Father, there's just a quick uh, slide that the team, you are, team URC would like to show. Right uh, there. It is. From the URC and OADRCW staff, Father Jet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so your yeah. support for research makes <laughs> Wow. Wow, oh, thank you. Thank you also. So thank you very much from uh, to Team URC. And, and now may we call on Dr. Banjo Bautista and Dr. Lenny Spiritu representing ARISE, or the Ateneo Research Institute of Science and Engineering. Hi, Father Jet. Hi, hi Lenny. Banjo. Banjo. Yeah, may, may I request my staff to please turn on their cameras too so you can see them? Okay. Good afternoon, Father Jet. Thank you, Father Jet. Good afternoon. Okay, I have a little message for you, Father. So can we turn on the, the, the microphone for a while? Okay. Uh, so, dear Father Jet, um, you were the bunny that kept us all together through the joys and tears. You were the voice that kept us going through your reassuring, sige lang, sige lang. And wherever the future will take you, please know that we shall be praying for you. So thank you for the excellent leadership and for all the love and support. Isang taus po sang pasasalamat, Father Jet, from all of us. Maraming, maraming salamat. Thank you, Father. <laughs> thank, right. you Father thank you, Father Jet. Thank you, Father. Uh, Father, may, may I request the chairs of Soste? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, man. Sure You're choppy. You're choppy. Uh, Bumubuhus ang ulan dito, Father. Eh. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the chairs of anyway, magpapasalamat kami mula sa SOSE at sa lahat ng tulong na ibinigay niyo sa amin, ang suporta ninyo sa research, ang suporta ninyo sa mga activities namin. We are very grateful. Thank you, Father Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Father. 
Salamat, Father Jet. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Tino, okay. Salamat din. Salamat sa inyong lahat. So thank you very much. Uh, Father, if it's okay, we, after we end the streaming, please stay on. We'll just have a few uh, online photo taking. No? There's a way for us to do that. Oh, the uh, and, for, <laughs> and also for the past acts of mag acts of magic guests, no, please stay on as well. But with that, uh, we conclude this session. As Father Jet had mentioned, we're always in, in we all often find ourselves in crossroads. Uh, to pause, to think, to listen, all right? And we hope that Acts of Magis have given you the, the opportunity to look, to listen, eventually to act, right? As we serve society together. You may watch all the sessions of Acts of Magis on artium.ateneo.edu and on the Ateneo Blue Cloud site. And on behalf of all the people who have made this possible, Thank you for journeying with us these past 13 weeks. And we look forward to being with you again soon. I am Chris Filio, and this is Acts of Magis, Athenians in the Service of Society. Ad maiorem Dei Gloria. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs>